Hey there, Care Blazer. Welcome back. In today's video, I'm going to share with you three tips or three things really to keep in mind whenever you're talking about your loved one with dementia in the presence of your loved one with dementia. Now, these three things to keep in mind are going to help your loved one with dementia feel more comfortable with you and with in their own skin. It's also going to help maintain their dignity and it's also going to reduce the chances that your loved one with dementia is going to get upset with you and whenever your loved one's feeling good and not upset with you that is increasing the chances that you're actually doing a bit better and that you are feeling good and that is what I like to call a win-win situation. If this is your first time watching Care Blazers TV, welcome. I'm so happy you're here. I'm Dr. Natalie. I'm a board certified Gero psychologist. And here we talk about everything dementia. Also, before we get started, I just again want to say thank you so much for all of you who are supporting me on patreon.com forward slash careblazers. Okay, now let's get started. Now you probably find yourself in the position every now and then of talking about your loved one with dementia in front of your loved one with dementia, whether it's answering questions at their doctor's appointment or talking to a friend on the phone about how you're doing or just having a visitor stop by at the house and kind of talking about your situation. It's pretty common that this would happen and that these situations occur. Now, what I want to call to light is that sometimes when we're constantly taking care of our loved ones with dementia and we are noticing all the impairment that our loved ones with dementia have, it's sometimes easy to kind of forget that they maybe are a person or that even despite all their difficulties, they can still hear sometimes and they can sometimes understand parts of what's going on. And a lot of times we sometimes have to vent and sometimes say things, but we can say things that are pretty hard for people with dementia to hear about themselves. And even though somebody does have dementia and does have a lot of impairment, it doesn't mean that they no longer have the ability to understand what you're saying sometimes. In fact, sometimes they can understand what you're saying or even just bits and pieces of what you're saying and the message that it's pretty negative or that you're frustrated with them or that you're really struggling can get relayed and come through. Now, this does not mean that you can't talk about how you're doing and that you can't talk about your caregiving situation. I just want to encourage you to know the difference between being able to talk truthfully and respectfully in the presence of your loved one with dementia and then also those times when you just need to vent. You're human. You're nor you're totally normal. It doesn't mean you're an awful person. Everybody, no matter who you are, sometimes just needs to vent about how hard it is and how frustrating it is and how they you just wish your loved one would take a bath or you just wish your loved one would go to sleep for once or that you just wish your loved one would tell you that they appreciate you. Like you you need to get those things off your chest and that's okay. But those kinds of conversations are better left and better met when your loved one might be sleeping or might not be around or really the chances of them overhearing the conversation are slim. So if your loved one is in your presence and you do have to say things that are truthful but aren't great, just be mindful and respectful in the way that you do so. And again, these tips are really just coming from the point that the more that your loved one does not get angry or upset or frustrated with you, the more that they don't start questioning you or doubting you or feeling like you're against them, the easier it's gonna be for you. And that's really my ultimate goal here is to try to find ways to make your caregiving situation even just the tiniest bit easier, even if it's just for a moment in the day. That's what this is doing here. So again, find your place to vent, use that time to vent, find people to talk to, but when your loved one is there in your presence, try to find a way to do it respectfully. So for example, let's say that your loved one with dementia is kind of a slob and doesn't like to bathe and you're feeling pretty disgusted by it. You could say something like your loved one is struggling to keep up with themselves and you guys are working on ways to make things easier for them. That would be what you would say if you were talking about this situation in the presence of your loved one where they could overhear. 
Now, obviously, if you are talking about this not in the presence of your loved one, you can let loose and you don't need to hold on to those filters and you can say exactly how you feel. So the three things I really want you to keep in mind is when you are communicating about your loved one with dementia and they are around, just because they have dementia does not mean that they can no longer hear, feel, or understand. They may struggle in all three of those areas to a certain extent, but just keep in mind that they may still have some of those abilities and it will negatively impact your relationship if you're talking about them in a pretty unfiltered way in front of them. Now, I do have a specific video on communication tips, specific communication tips you could use when talking to your loved one with dementia that reduces the chances of arguments and frustrations. And I will link to that above this video. But just in general, this purpose of this video is just to keep in mind that, you know, even though your loved one may seem pretty impaired, they do pick up on some things and we just wanna be mindful of how you're talking about them in front of them. Here's another thing just to keep in mind. If you are talking about your loved one in front of your loved one to somebody else, include them in the conversation every now and then. Even if they can't really participate or um, fully engage in the conversation, it is okay to look over to them and smile and nod or reach your hand over and just make them feel like they're somewhat in the conversation. Now this goes not only for you, the care blazer, this goes for everybody, including doctors and professionals. I mean, I've been guilty of it sometimes too in an appointment, looking at the family member who's asking a lot of questions and then having to remind myself that, you know, to look over to the person with dementia and smile and make them feel comfortable and that they're included. Again, it's pretty um, uncomfortable for somebody with dementia who doesn't understand everything to see people talking in front of them and kind of get the feeling that it's about them, but they're not being included. So you just want to try these little things to help make your relationship with your loved one even better, go more smoothly, and to help reduce the chances that your loved one's going to get agitated or upset or frustrated. So as a quick reminder, your loved one with dementia obviously is a human who has feelings and has some ability to understand. So just keep that in mind when you're having conversations with other people about your situation. And please take and find time to vent and get things off your chest. That's absolutely needed. Just try to find it during a time when your loved one's not around. Careblazer, I hope this video was just a gentle reminder to be more mindful about how you're talking about your loved one with dementia when they're around. I know you're doing great work. The fact that you tuned in and watched these YouTube videos means that you're doing an excellent job, Careblazer, and that you really take the role of being an excellent family member and carer for your loved one to the extreme. I know that about you. This is just a great reminder and keep up the great work. Leave a comment below. Let me know what you thought about this video. Make sure you join this private Careblazer community over on Facebook so that you can stay in touch during the week with other supportive Careblazers in similar situations. I will be back next week, same place on Sunday. See you then.